Next item on the agenda is 11B3, report regarding facilities, maintenance, and operations projects. Dr. Gonzalez. Yes, sir, Mr. President. This is a monthly report from our facilities, maintenance, and operation department. Mr. Ruben Trevino will guide us through this month's projects, and this item is for information purposes only. Welcome, Mr. Trevino. Good evening, members of the board. Uh, Superintendent Dr. Gonzalez, I'm here to present on the uh, projects that are going on for our district for the uh, month of April and, and uh, to commence for the rest of the summer. Uh, some of our uh, projects that we have currently have going right now is our Agricultural Learning Center. Uh, those two pictures up there are probably from about a week ago, week and a half ago. Uh, there's CMU block already being laid. Uh, the walls, you can see on the bottom picture, are going up. Uh, that is the front of the uh, building with the multi multi-purpose room and restroom facilities and the main entrance is that center area. The top picture is your, your slab with your drains already embedded uh, in there or the cutouts where the drains are, are supposed to go and that's a uh, picture uh, looking from the west towards the east towards the old uh, steer and heifer barn that you see right there uh, on the, on the part, top part of it. Uh, the other projects that we have is the fire alarms, uh, Jackson, Kathy, and Castaneda, uh, Travis, Navarro, and Crockett. We've got three of those campuses pretty much at 90, 95% complete, and those are ongoing right now as we speak. We also have nine intercoms uh, that are being installed at nine different campuses. We've got the first set of three that are pretty much at 90% complete as well. The second set uh, have already started, and the third are right behind. All of these are on contract and uh, materials are on site at the schools. We're just contractors moving from campus to campus. We have our CMAR uh, stadium press box project that we've been meeting on and uh, we're coming up with our uh, best way of, of looking at this project uh, from a budgetary standpoint. As we all know right now, uh, steel is a big component of this project. Steel right now is 70 to 80% higher than it's ever been. Uh, steel right now has a six to eight month lead time uh, when it used to be six to eight weeks. And the recommendations from our design team and uh, CMAR is uh, we're just going to continue to uh, look at the design, uh, see where we can uh, save. And at the same time, the recommendation is we feel that, or they feel that uh, coming from the steel manufacturers uh, that the pricing should begin to reverse sometime around the third quarter. Um, so we, we're hoping for that, uh, you know, to, to, be, <laughs> to be real and start seeing those prices come back to somewhat normal. Does that mean uh, we're not even going to start construction? Right now, that's what we're, we're pending, the, the, the guaranteed maximum price so that we can present it, and we should have some information hopefully this coming, uh, for this coming uh, month on, on the guaranteed maximum price. We also have the Culinary Arts Lab Renovation Project at Achieve Early College High School, which is the top picture. Uh, demolition has already uh, begun. We've got the cutouts for the uh, floor drains that you see in the picture as well. Uh, we also have the uh, district-wide bottle water filler station. Uh, out of the 184 units, I think there's about 50, 55 already installed, and they're being installed each and every day. We also have the McAllen High School East doors uh, that are being replaced, 12 sets of doors. That picture on the bottom right is when the doors were being delivered. We've already got two sets already fully installed by the contractor as of today, and uh, they're continuing uh, to work on that project. We also have the Memorial High School roof replacement, in which materials have also been ordered and contractors already uh, in place for that project. We have the McAllen High School HVAC improvements, phase two. Uh, that already has started as well. As you see that picture on the uh, right-hand side, uh, they're beginning to, to work on the different areas. Uh, we're working with campus administration and uh, taking it one step at a time to see how far we can get ahead before the uh, summer months get here. We also have the Rowe High School softball field lighting improvements uh, going on. The materials uh, are on order. We're waiting for them to get delivered and the contractors on board uh, ready to begin on the electrical uh, components of it. We have the restroom partition replacements. Uh, which are Rayburn, Gonzalez, Escandon, Morris, and Travis, uh, contractors on board. Contract has been executed and materials uh, have been ordered, just waiting for them to get here and we will start uh, working on those projects as well. 
We also have the portable remodel for Tech Center at Chief Early College High School. That is the top left design that you see. This is, uh, this is gonna be housing Ms. Ann Vega's department. And as you can see, uh, that portable is already on site. It was delivered two weeks ago. And we will be starting construction on the, on the inside portion of that portable building uh, here in the next uh, week or so. We also have the technology relocation remodel uh, over at FMO building, which is the top right. And we have the FMO remodel, which is the bottom picture, uh, that includes the operations training room with lounge, the conference room, and the network operations center on the left of that uh, sketch. Upcoming projects, we've got restroom partition replacements at two high schools. McAllen High School and Memorial High School. Uh, we, receive, we will be re re receiving pricing for those two uh, high school projects uh, at, on Friday of this week. We also have seven paving projects that are on schedule. Uh, we, receive, we will be receiving bids for these seven campuses, which is Lamar, Travis, Rowe, Alvarez, Wilson, Memorial, and Rayburn. And uh, bids are due Wednesday of this week to uh, bring back to the board in the first meeting in May. And we also are gonna begin installing our district-wide installation of air purification systems. And the work order's completed for the month of March, 818 and 487. Thank you, sir. And this concludes my report. Questions? Yes, sir. Uh, getting back to the, uh, um, the stadium, the press box. Um, just so make sure I don't muffle. My, um, What's your thoughts, or anyone from the administration, Mrs. Benavides, or anyone, about having to adjust for the cost there? What's the likelihood that we're gonna to have to do that? Based on the, the steel, because of the steel prices. Well, it's, it's not only steel, it's pretty much all the components that we have and the lead times uh, that, are, that are pretty much combining for that. Uh, but on the first meeting in May, we can have a full, a full report uh, with the design team and the engineer so that uh, we can, you know, I guess, get, get the final numbers in and see where we're at at that point mm -hmm. and see if it's beneficial either to continue moving forward or to wait and try and achieve more savings. Okay. But it's not likely going to cost us less than what we've already projected. Correct. But it could cost us more. Correct. Okay. Is it good to the point what you may or may not know the number, and if you do, it's probably not a good at this point, you know, because... Uh, but is it likely to be significant enough that we would have to alter our timetable or our plan to do what we Not necessarily. Okay. Uh, they're, 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 they're currently working on that. Uh, I, I, I talk to, to both, both teams on a, you know, pretty much every other day, and they're trying to make adjustments, and uh, we've met on it several times. And like I said, uh, we were planning on having our engineer here, but he happened to be out of town for this week, but he'll be in. Uh, for our May meeting. Is there a possibility that the plans themselves may have to be modified in order to keep the cost? We're looking at line? different options okay. to see which ones are gonna be uh, suitable and, and, and which ones make, make, make better sense. Uh -huh. Thank you. As far and as the we'll rest be bringing all those options to the board as well. All right. Thank you, Mr. Thurie. Uh, appreciate, appreciate that report. Uh, the restroom facilities, uh, are they on track and on time to be able to, the, the materials are necessary uh, received so you can complete those restroom yes, sir. facilities on time? Yes, sir. The last two uh, restroom upgrades that we're doing are the, the two high schools, uh, and uh, those are the last two that were on the, on, the, on, the, on the list, and those we will be working with administration, and we can work on those during the school year because there's several available throughout the big high schools, so that we're able, it allows us to shut one down while another one is being worked on. And then as far as the air purification systems, uh, we have phase one, phase two. <coughs> What's the completion on, on, on both? Right now we're uh, waiting for those uh, components to come in. We already have the transformers and all the low voltage wire in stock. We already purchased that. And as soon as they come in, we'll start installing. And the goal is to have them installed by August before uh, school starts. And our, our, our staff's already been trained to yes, make sir. those Yes, they've already been trained by the company. As my understanding, reading the material that, were pro that was provided to us is uh, there's not a whole lot of maintenance on it. And there's a three year warranty on the item. So in those three years, if it fails, we get another one, we install and we're done. After that, it's pretty easy to replace if we had to replace. Yes, sir. Okay. Thank you very much for all your work in, in this report tonight. Thank, Thank you, you, sir. Trustee Forina. 
Mr. Trevino, what, what's going on at FMO? What are, what are we doing out there? We've, uh, we're trying to maximize on the square footage on conditioned space uh, over in the building. So now that we've moved several departments and reorganized uh, different areas, uh, we're now re re remodeling some of those areas uh, that are at FMO that used to be conditioned and uh, we're trying to take advantage of it and, and house uh, individuals or different departments within the areas. So are we moving people out of FMO to move people in or? No, no. We are now housing the technology department there. Uh, we now have student operations and what used to be purchasing before. Uh, we have our um, Dr. Noel's team as well uh, at, at uh, the old purchasing area. And we're now converting part of the uh, caged area to house our network operations center. Uh, and the technology department. And I can appreciate using the building to maximize its full potential. Are we affecting any of your staff? Is any of your, are we moving things? Are we gonna have stuff open air and it's gonna get affected by the elements or? No, sir, the only thing that we're moving, we're not moving any staff. Uh, all, all, all staff have their work sites, their workspaces, cubicles. As a matter of fact, we're maximizing on, on, on spaces that were not being used uh, in the past, which are now, you know, fully maximized. Right. Uh, but there's no, uh, no particular staff. The only thing that we're moving is materials, tools, and we're storing that in, in storage bins that can be in storage bins versus being stored in a conditioned space. Okay. And for the air purifiers, purification system again, <laughs> it seems like everybody says that we're going to have these desktop items that we just we pop on our desk and it's going to be loud and it'll interrupt the uh, the the teaching and that's not the case of what we're getting no can you just give us a, a brief description of our systems is the ionization unit that goes installed within the unit itself so like for example in this room here you won't see it anywhere it's, it's it goes back in the unit in the coils in the duct and it treats the air as it's coming out through your grills here in the room so you will you won't you won't be able to visually see it. So when other districts are coming out and saying, oh, we're not going to do it like McAllen, ours is going to be in the classroom, and it, ours, if we don't tell you it's there, you wouldn't know. Correct. So it's that part of the infrastructure. Yes. All right. Thank you, sir. Trustee Suarez. Um, I just want to clarify something, and this is, this is a, a, an issue that's going out nationwide. Um, if you order a window right now for your house, it's, it's an eight-week lead time. I mean, that's just, that's just a fact. And uh, my concern is, Dr. Gonzalez, I think that, you know, I don't know if, if, I know Ruben has a lot of projects going on. I was a board member that asked for what, what we've completed, the projects that I asked for, what we've completed and, and what, what's ongoing. Um, but I'll give you an example. The row lights, uh, softball lights, we had asked for a while back. And it was more of a safety concern. Uh, whatever the issue was, We've had to wait. I'm sure that the price of, of that steel has gone up as well. Um, this project was supposed to start construction in January for whatever reason. Um, and I know it's not um, Ru Ruben's fault, but whatever reason, every time we delay a project, it's gonna cost us more money. Mm -hmm. uh, this is how it is. And I don't know if we're short staffed in that area, if, if the purchasing department can expedite things. Um, uh, if contracts from our attorneys can be signed faster, whatever needs to be done to expedite issues needs to be done. Because the longer we wait, mm -hmm. um, it's affecting our everyday operation. And you have a city of McAllen that's given us a million dollars to do a project. And now we want to tell them, well, we're going to wait because we're going to wait and see if the price is going to go down. I don't think that that's how we do business here. I don't think that that's how we should do business here. I think that when we commit to a project, we need to execute the project and give our administration and our personnel the tools they need to complete the project. Now, I might be speaking way beyond what I need to speak, but I think that that seems to be the tendency that sometimes we're missing deadlines because we're not jiving together. Don't, don't get me wrong, we do a lot of things right. We do 99.9% .9 things right. But in this instance, I think that we need to work, we need to gather as a team and, and, and make sure that we expedite these things so that, 
so that Mr. Trevino and his department can expedite these contracts and these commitments that we've given our partners and not being able to say, well, we're going to wait because we don't know the price on things. Yes, sir. So uh, we have contractors in place. We have engineers in place. They're on-call engineers. They get paid to solve problems. Let's, let's get them to solve our problems. So I, I just ask for the team to, to come together and expedite a lot of these issues because if we keep waiting, our partitions require steel. If we don't get them done quick, it takes us longer to do it. Instead of being a five-week lead time, it's going to be a year lead time. Mm -hmm. And here we are promising our community and our taxpayers that we're you know, remodeling and fixing our, our facilities and obstacles are in the way. Now, I, I get it. I mean, I'm, I'm telling you, I do my fair share of, of some construction stuff and I know we delay things, but when someone told me it's gonna take eight weeks to get them, well then I went another avenue and I'm getting them in three weeks. There's ways to do things. So I just, I ask that, that we exhaust all solutions out there so that we can expedite our projects. Yes, sir. Anybody else? Just a quick comment for me, uh, uh, Ms. Benavides and Mr. Trevino, uh, in regards to the, to the scoreboard, uh, I was looking up real quick to see if there's any name rights in press box, and, and they are. So I just, you know, if we're looking for another stream of revenue, that might be an option too. I mean, I know with the scoreboard now being, uh, is it completely paid off, Ms. Richards, or? No. Not yet. It not will yet. 95%? Uh, uh, yes, sir. We'll have our last payment next fiscal year. Next fiscal year. So we're 90%? Yes, sir. Okay. I mean, I don't want to have it inaccurate, but it's almost there. So maybe we need to wait on that to pay it off before we do anything else. But anyway, Mr. Davino, it's a pleasure seeing you in person. Thank you for, for thank you. it's been a while. So thank you for uh, that great report.